Um, I want to I want to ask you about sort of the uh, the the modern the evolving modern high volume three point shooter because in my career how threes were generated changed for sure you know when you know when I played with Orlando you know we were one of the first teams that played four out one in mm-hmm. spread pick and roll Dwight Howard diving down the lane. <laughs> There was a lot of spot up threes or swing swings. Yeah, there's not a lot of swing swings now. No, you know, t- teams are trying actively to take away corner threes for sure. Um, and so, and then it, then it was like Kyle Korver and me, Clay Thompson, Steph yeah. running off screens. Um, then all of a sudden, Steph and Dame and all these guys started shooting <laughs> ten threes off the dribble and yeah. high pick and rolls a game. Yeah, um, you're shooting seven a game at forty two percent. That's high volume, highly efficient. How do you feel? you get most of your shots right now in that in, in i know you shoot more than threes but yeah. in terms of getting those those bullets out like yeah. shooting those bullets like how do you how do you generate that i mean it's it's uh that was that was honestly one of my focuses going into the off season is just being able to get them off in a multitude of ways so um whether it's transition i mean try to find a lot of threes before the defense is set because you know in the half court um teams are going to key on you a little bit more and um, obviously not allow you to get those off. But, I mean, playing with a guy that's dynamic like Ja, um, you know, if you don't show him bodies, he's going to be living in the paint all night. So a lot of times teams will show, you know, a little help and then run out hard at three-point line instead of, you know, driving in for the layups or go try to finish over a big. I'll let him fly by and um, shoot those side step three. So I get a lot of those. And then we have, you know, a few ATOs and things like that that I'll get. But um, <clears throat> try to get a lot of them when the defense aren't set. And then, um, you know, just in the free flow of the game, whatever it may be. Yeah. The the balls to take transition three, transition dribble up threes, not many yeah. guys have the the – the skill set or really the just the freedom to do it yeah and you do that really well um the two-man game with with, with steven adams is really interesting to me too because yeah. you guys have a nice dho game a nice dribble handoff game you also use the throw and go mm-hmm. with him and obviously the pinaways yeah i played with him last year he's one of the best screeners <laughs> yeah he's one of the best screeners in the league for sure and he's such a great teammate his job is so thankless to me. I know. It's just he doesn't get enough credit and praise for, for how good he is at what he does. I know. I mean, you look at the box score and he might have four points, eight rebounds, and, you know, one block. But, um, you know, what he does for us is, um, you know, limitless. You know, he's, he's our connector. He keeps offense going. I mean, you know, playing with a, a guy that's a great screener like that is a shooter's dream. You know, know that you're coming off the screen every time and the defender's going to be trailing you to to some degree, um, you know, is, is a nice feeling to have. And with my ability to get in the lane and play a little bit more in there, it's I think it has made us a little more dynamic offensively. Yeah, your ability to – uh, you know, specifically on those pinaways, going to your right mm-hmm. hand curl and either take it to the basket or shoot your floater. Another thing I've noticed is your ability to relocate. Mm-hmm. And I think this is really, for any shooter, is such an underappreciated skill. For sure. Because, you know, if, if you're running a set play and John Morant's <clears throat> running a pick and roll, you're, you're standing still. For sure. You know, you're standing still. You're letting that pick and roll happen organically. Jaws obviously surveying the floor. He's reading whatever coverage the the big is in, what, whether they're going over or under. So he's doing that. But the skill for the guy off the ball for sure. is figuring out when that help defense comes and what the passing angle is is where, where the passing angle is for Jaw to get you the ball. And I think you do this better than any young player in the league. And, I, and I'm curious if that's something that you've learned since you got to the pros, or has that always been an intuitive thing for you on the basketball court? So I think it's a little bit of both. Um, You know, I grew up watching sports every day. You know, I was never like a TV show, cartoon um, type kid. So I think just 
watching the game and seeing what works for certain guys, I think was, was big for me growing up. But, um, you know, I give a lot of credit to, uh, Ryan Miller. He was my assistant coach at TCU. Mike Miller, obviously his brother played in the league forever. Um, you know, and in the back half of his career, I mean, he was a standstill shooter, you know, a guy that couldn't really create shots on his own. So he had to learn how to play off of stars and guys like that. And he, coach Miller, you know, originally was telling me that if I got an opportunity the NBA that's probably what my role would look like so we spent a lot of time um you know learning the nuances of of that type of stuff playing off the ball and how to be effective and efficient off the ball